Hello, my name is Richard Thripp, and I'm running for Congress in Florida's 6th District, which includes Daytona Beach and the surrounding areas. I'm doing an update today on March 19, 2020, about uh, what we're seeing right now with coronavirus and COVID-19, which is the respiratory infection that it causes. Uh, the president's been trying to rewrite history and say that the whole time he knew it was a serious condition, that it was an emergency, but you can just go back and see that wasn't the case, and it cost us a lot of time. Uh, we're way behind in testing people for it compared to other countries like South Korea, and so we really don't know how many people have it. Now in Volusia County, the sheriff, Mike Chitwood, has been putting out data that isn't usually put out uh, to the public on suspected cases. And we have, you know, over 50 suspected cases in the county. So it's very important now that people stay away from each other. Uh, many people aren't able to stay home. You have to earn a living. And uh, I just read about Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, is still being open, even when their employees don't want to be there. Uh, other people who are healthcare workers, for example, they don't have a choice. They have to be working and they're not even protected from this virus. So especially, even if you're young and you probably won't get very sick for from it, you might even have it and not know it. When you go out, you're endangering other people. You're endangering the elderly, people with conditions. Um, and we see some uh, Republicans that are saying, well, the old people, they don't have to go out. It's their fault if they catch it. And that's just not true. I mean, oftentimes people live with each other, grandchildren are visiting, could spread it. So it's really a come down everyone to protect each other. Uh, for the economic impacts, they're big for everybody, the wealthy as well as the uh, lower income and working class. And this is going to be bigger than 2008 in terms of the severity of the cases. And that's true no matter what, like, even if they were able to wrap it up, let's say at the end of April, and magically we've you know, contained the virus, just these two months alone are going to be enough to make this year much worse than 2008 or 2009 was. Now, obviously, Congress is going to take a while to get relief to people. Uh, the Republican congressman in my district, uh, Michael Waltz, who uh, I'm Richard Thripp, I'm running against him in November, uh, he came out voting against that relief package that the House had just put together. And he said the reason he voted against it was, well, they gave it to us very late, and I didn't have time to read it. Well, that's not really true, because I guarantee you, He's voted for many bills before that he didn't read all of them. Nobody sits there and reads through every page of every bill because they're just ridiculously long when they're put together by attorneys and committees. So obviously that wasn't really an important vote because it was already going to pass 360 to 40. But I think it just kind of shows you where the priorities are. And a lot of times the priorities, they don't make any sense. A lot of people now, you know, I, I used to be a Republican too, but a lot of people are waking up now that haven't already seeing that we're trying to battle this virus, but we're not having any leadership and we're being gaslit and told right now that Donald Trump is saying, oh, I knew the whole time that this was a serious um, thing and I was like telling people we need to do something. That's just not true. I mean, you can't rewrite history. You can go back and look at his tweets, look at his public statements and he'd say things like, it's a hoax or it's just going to magically disappear. And of course it didn't, and now it's even worse than it, it could have been if, if we had gotten a handle on it sooner. And so in the end, if every American ends up getting this, which it could be, we might have over a million dead Americans on our hands. Uh, if some people are still arguing that, oh, it's no worse than the flu. Look, the flu kills like 30 to 60,000 people a year, and this is only killed a few thousand. Well, that's just because it hasn't had time yet. It just came out of nowhere. It's never been in humans before. It's a virus that existed in bats and other animals for millions of years. But it's brand new and we have no immunity to it. And uh, the fatality rate, although it might not be 3%, it's certainly a lot higher than the flu, which is 0.1%. And um, it's definitely more contagious than the flu as well. So acting like this is no big deal, it just doesn't align with the data because you're going to see a curve that goes up like this. So if we're here right now, the flu curve doesn't go. It's just going to be flat like it usually is. But for the coronavirus curve, it just keeps going up and takes off each day. It just gets worse and worse. Like New York had a ton of new cases today. And tomorrow they might have even more. 
Uh, as I said, for the economic impacts, we really need to get money in people's hands right now so they have money to pay the bills, they have money to pay um, their utilities and, and pay for their rent. Uh, of course, whatever relief Americans can provide to each other, it's like some landlords are letting the rent slide for a few months. Uh, the American people are very generous. We're probably the most generous people on earth when it comes to giving to charity and giving to others. So we will get through this, but it's just something that just hit us. And obviously some people foresaw it, some didn't, but now we're all in the thick of it and we've got to work together, even though we have to maintain physical uh, distance from each other. One of the big upsides to this crisis really is the environmental impact when it comes to carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, you know, and other greenhouse gas emissions. I bet this year will be the first year that we've ever seen, say, a 10% decline, and maybe hopefully even more. And, and that's really the kind of reaction we should have to the climate crisis on its own not being spurred on by a contagious virus that's forcing all cruises to be canceled and many airlines are going to cut their flights 100% to international or domestic 50% even more. I mean, that's how it should have been the whole time because you're just leaving a planet that in the future is going to be so inhospitable for humans. It doesn't matter if you don't even care. If you don't care about animals, you don't care about nature or ecology, you still should care about the climate crisis because the human costs alone are staggering. I mean, we used to have three billion people on this planet in 1960, and now there's seven and a half billion. And you know, we have so much more when it comes to travel, when it comes to cars and, and concrete and uh, all kinds of electrification, oil, gasoline being used, and uh, it's made it so the oceans are hotter. Hurricanes like Hurricane um, Michael and Dorian grow to be much more powerful, much faster. And uh, this hurricane season might be bad because instead of having El Nino, we're gonna have El Nina, and that makes it even worse for hurricanes. So I think that this is a, a big opportunity for uh, us to like look at what we're doing with the climate crisis and also what we're doing with our economy because it's just out of control in the United States when it comes to income and wealth stratification. We're looking at stuff you haven't really seen since the 1920s. And right now, I'm not really seeing a whole lot coming out of, say, Jeff Bezos or other billionaires on uh, what they're doing to help. I mean, besides Bill Gates, he's always doing helpful things. But where, where are they now when you need them? And we shouldn't need them, but we kind of need them because we have decades of the past where we've been doing these massive tax giveaways, privilege, corporate giveaways, waiving regulations, waiving you know property tax for Amazon to come to say Deltona, and uh, that set us up to be in the red as a national um, government, and it set us up to have put too much money and wealth in the hands of people who should have wealth, but it's just that they have too much because uh, what they're using, you know, they're using all of the public commons, they're using the roads, they're using the advantages they get by taking advantage of our capital markets. And, you know, you have to capture part of them because we capture a lot of that money when it comes to working class people. It doesn't matter if you only make less than the federal poverty line, you still have to pay 15.3% in the, the FICA, the Social Security and Medicare. Well, wealthy people don't even have to pay into that generally because they don't pay, um, they don't get paid in wages so much as they do in capital gains, which doesn't have those kind of taxes on it. Uh, and so that's really why I've come out in support of the universal basic income and I've come out in support of universal health care for everybody. And um, I've also supported the Green New Deal. I know it's going to be questioned left and right. How are you going to pay for it? Well, the way we pay for it is by closing these tax loopholes, rewriting our tax code to uh, make the whole country more equitable for everyone. And that really helps small businesses because right now a lot of small businesses have been put out of business by large businesses like Amazon who comes in and, and will try to drive down prices until you got a business or like Walmart used to do where they would put little businesses under by lowering their prices. They might sell at a loss for a while. And then after those small local stores went under, they could raise the prices back up. That's not fair, that's not American, and, and that's not even capitalism, that's corporate oligarchy, basically. So uh, stay safe out there with coronavirus, keep a distance, 
and uh, only go out if it's necessary or if you have to because of your job or your work. And uh, what we really need now, of course, is test kits. And they keep saying anyone can get tested. It's not true. Uh, there's stories all over that people cannot get tested. The governor, Ron DeSantis, just went on today saying that um, we were thinking we were going to get a quarter million test kits this week. So far, we've only got about 5,000, and it looks like we're not going to get any more this week. So it's just not true. And so what happens is uh, we have nothing to go on with the data. How many people have it? We have no idea. We know it has to be a lot more than the uh, numbers we're seeing because so many people got better on their own or spread it or might not even be symptomatic. But then the people who do have it and have symptoms or are really sick, they can't even get tested if they want to. And so there's no way for them to know for sure whether they have it or not. And there's no way for them to get added on to the statistics. And that is terrible. It's almost as if we're a third world country when it comes to this. And we shouldn't be as the largest economy and the most advanced country in the world. All right, that's uh, Richard Thrip for Congress signing off. Follow me online, thrip.com, T-H-R-I-P-P.com. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, you'll be hearing more from me soon. Thank you and good night.